Blessed are you, God of compassion and mercy. To you be praise and glory forever. In the darkness of our sin, your light breaks forth like the dawn, and your healing springs up for deliverance. As we rejoice in the gift of your saving help, sustain us with your bountiful spirit, and open our lips to sing your praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This morning we read from 2 Samuel and chapters 11 and 12. We read here the account of David and Bathsheba. Bathsheba is married to Uriah the Hittite, a brave soldier in David's army. And uh, David sees this woman bathing and lusts after her, commits adultery with her and gets her pregnant. He then calls for Uriah to be sent back to give a report of the battle and tries to get Uriah to sleep with his wife so that he can cover up uh, the sin that David's committed. Uh, Uriah refuses, saying that the, his comrades are out on the battlefield. How can he uh, live in comfort in his own house? Um, and so refuses to sleep with his wife. So David can't pretend that the child belongs to Uriah. So he then sends Uriah back into the battle with instructions to the general that Uriah is to be put in the fiercest part of the battle. And then when the enemy attacks, the rest of the troops are to withdraw, leaving Uriah to be killed by David's enemies. Absolute despicable behaviour by David. He is a loyal soldier and David repays him by committing adultery against him and then having him killed. David thinks he got, he's got away with it. But then the prophet Nathan comes to him and tells him a parable about a rich man and a poor man and how the rich man took away everything from the poor man and asked David what should be done. And David said that the rich man, of course, should be punished. And Nathan pointed to David and said, you are the man. David cried out to the Lord for forgiveness, begged the Lord for forgiveness. And he wrote at this time, Psalm 51, have mercy on me. O oh God, in your great goodness, according to the abundance of your compassion, blot out my offences, wash me thoroughly from my wickedness, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. David cries out in repentance to the Lord, and God forgives him, and allows him to remain king. But the child who was born as the, the result of that adulterous relationship, dies. It wasn't possible for the child born in this way to become king of Israel. Um, Bathsheba's next son, Solomon, eventually becomes king of Israel, but the one born in because the result of the sinful relationship could not become king to maintain the integrity of the king kingdom. The real story here is that, that God did not take his spirit away from David. David continued to reign as king and found an increased anointing in the latter days of his kingship. And sin, when repented of, is forgiven by God and does not prevent uh, further service in God's kingdom. It has consequences, very real and painful consequences in our lives. It may hinder the work that God has called us to do, but repentance restores us and God will again raise you up. So if you think you've messed it up, if you think you've failed, if you think there's no way back for you, turn to God in genuine repentance and find forgiveness. And you will find, though, though the consequences of your sin may be great, you will find that there is a place of forgiveness and a place of restoration. Amen.